What's up guys? Welcome back. I hope you're in the mood for more comfort food because today I'm showing you my recipe for pot roast. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right, enough running my mouth. Time to get in the kitchen and make it happen. Here we have a four pound chuck roast that I got from Wegmans. When you're shopping for one of these bad boys, you wanna make sure that they have nice marbling, which are basically these lines of fat that I'm showing you right here. You also wanna make sure that it's even in size on both sides. So this one's almost perfectly square, which is perfect. You also wanna make sure it's even in thickness. That way one side doesn't cook faster than the other. This one is perfect for a pot roast. Step number one is gonna to be to season this pot roast beautifully with some salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. I like to keep it nice and simple for my roast, but feel free to adjust the uh, seasonings to whatever you like to use. Um, but we're keeping it simple today. Again, just salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. You wanna be a little heavy handed on the salt because again, this is a four pound piece of meat. So it's gonna need quite a bit of seasoning just to make sure that you uh, get adequate flavor into the meat. So as you see here, I'm laying on a nice thick layer of seasoning on both sides. I like to season on this tray or on a plate um, because it catches any excess seasoning and I'll show you in just a second how you can you know season the sides of your meat without wasting any of your seasoning that you spent your hard-earned money on so again just salt pepper garlic onion powder as always guys all of the specific measurements and ingredients are in the description box for you below once you've seasoned both sides of your chuck roast go ahead and pick it up and just use the excess seasoning that's on your tray to season the edges of the meat, as you see me doing right here. That way nothing goes to waste. You want this to come up to room temperature before you start cooking it, so let it sit out for about 30 to 45 minutes. After that, we're gonna add a nice thin layer of flour, which is gonna help us get a nice crust when we go to sear our pot roast. Crust equals flavor uh, for your roast. So if you're gonna do this in a crock pot, please do not skip out on the step of searing it first. So you can follow this recipe up until the sear and then place it in your crock pot until it becomes fork tender. So again, just a nice thin layer of flour on all sides. Then you wanna get your Dutch oven nice and hot, add a little avocado oil or vegetable oil, and then you wanna sear the meat on both sides for four to five minutes per side. Always press down to get some of that surface area contact, which will also promote an even sear and delicious crust. While that is searing, we're gonna go ahead and prep our vegetables. I have two onions and one full head of garlic here. Basically what we're gonna do is build a bed or a nest for our beef so it doesn't necessarily uh, touch the bottom of the pot, but it'll rest comfortably on those vegetables. So cut your onions in half like you see me doing right here and then with your garlic cut about one fourth or a quarter of the way down and we're going to leave the garlic whole just like that after about four or five minutes you see some beautiful crusts develop in there if a little bit breaks off no big deal that's going to help thicken your gravy later anyway really what we're trying to do is get a nice crust on all sides of our pot roast once you've achieved that, you can go ahead and remove it, set it aside for a moment. I'm gonna use my onion here to get up some of that fawn from the bottom of the pan. And again, we're just building a nice little nest for our pot roast. I'm gonna deglaze the pan with one cup of red wine. I prefer dry wine in this case, so something like a Cabernet. Don't go super expensive on your wine. You can use a nice cheap bottle. 19 Crimes is good for like nine or 10 bucks. And you wanna get up all that fawn that's off of the bottom of the pan because that's gonna add some delicious flavor to our sauce. Bring this up to a boil for two or three minutes. That way that alcohol cooks off and then we're throwing in some fresh herbs that was rosemary and thyme. Now I'm adding in one tablespoon of tomato paste and a tablespoon or two of beef base. Then we're going in with three cups of beef broth Bring that up to a boil and then we're going to reduce it to a simmer and pop that in the oven at 325 degrees. 
So while our roast is hanging out in the hot tub, we're gonna go ahead and prep our vegetables. Here we have carrots, celery, and red potatoes. Make sure to peel your carrots and then chop them into bite-sized pieces. You do not wanna add these in at the same time as your roast because they'll just turn to mush. So you want your roast to braise in the oven at 325 for about two hours. And then for the final hour, we're gonna place in these vegetables, allow them to become tender. So chop up your celery, your carrots, cut your red potatoes in half or quarter them depending on how big they are. Always clean your produce as well. Same thing with the celery. I like to cut them into about an inch and a half, maybe two inch thick pieces. This is how we're looking after two hours. We're gonna go ahead and add in our root vegetables and pop that back in the oven. It's looking delicious. Your house is smelling amazing. Thank me later. We're sitting here at the two and a half hour mark doing the fork test. We're checking for tenderness. The pot roast should shred super easy with the fork. If not, you wanna keep cooking it until it does shred like so. For the final 30 minutes, I put it back in the oven without the lid. That helps to brown the roast and reduce our gravy a bit as well. Now for the most important part, we're gonna plate this up and give it a nice taste test. Damn, it's looking good. One important step is to strain your gravy. Just to make sure you get anything that you don't want in there, get that out. And then we're gonna make what's called a slurry, which is mixing some cornstarch with water. Again, the specific measurements and ingredients are in the description box below. That slurry is gonna help thicken your gravy. So we've already strained our gravy. Now we're gonna bring it up to a boil and whisk in that slurry. Again, to thicken things up a bit, give it that gravy consistency. Like so. Liquid gold right there. We're gonna ladle that onto our beautiful pot roast. Oh man, that's a money shot, guys. You see how easily it's shredding with just two forks? That means it's super tender. It's definitely ready for me to give it a taste test. This, my friends, is how a pot roast should look. Gotta hit it with a little parsley so you guys can make fun of me in the comments and for a pop of color. Remember, as always, guys, you eat with your eyes first. And in this case, I'm gonna eat with my mouth second because this is looking too good to pass up. I'm gonna hit it with one more trademark money shot, little gravy pour for you guys. We're going heavy on the food pour in this episode. Now for the moment of truth. Oh man, that's the one. When you point at it, you know it's good. Hope you guys enjoy the recipe. Remember to give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you for your support.